I thought we'd um, bring the decorum to the proceedings. So this is uh, an exchange of conversational nuisance that may be safely conducted by respectable young ladies at tea table. And there are some free copies that you can take away so that you may be young ladies in the privacy of your own parlours, but you will need a very good magnifying glass to see. <laughs> can you tell me, please, is the enchantment of finishing off a stroll in the dark worth the combustlement of dandying out and filching the oysters? Says Mr. Wilde, the world was my oyster, but I used the wrong fork. Would you agree the globular world, he is a toothsome catch, until you have tried a peach, or would you prefer a pear or a pineapple? A pineapple is a proposition, two kilometres for a Tuesday, too dexterous for the rod on a Thursday. Could you say, did you ever see such a thing as the growling of a picked cane squared in the locks of a bluesiness? A little more than picked kin and less than thin rind might square your circle. If you could, like Euclid, compute the fruits of your labour, would they be a very much? Could you fit them in a rabbit hutch? Might you lose your sense of touch? Are we talking double Dutch? <laughs> Nonsense is a base to render a rainbow over a cup of tea, quacked the sage to the pickled onion. Would you agree, in order for a sphere to swell the inner term of a triangle, must your eyes fathom a wave? I foresee a storm in a teacup if N is the base by which this wise duck multiplies his tables. See the butterfly, for it is butterfly that spoils the syllabub. If the conclusion of the syllabub is an ordinary diving suit with a small but central modification of a bath plug and a chain of crotch level, what are its major and minor premises? In the nursery, all desserts are made by scaling trees. Rooted knees are a dessert. Therefore, rooted knees are robbing red-faced pie. If you danced the same necklace, would it be square to walk a year to double your cake and wine? Then tis no wonder the onion is pickled clearly at the mere old Madeira, in a queer mood since you lit the wallpaper. Talking of parties, I note your reception is large, have you darkened your windows and employed musicians? Twas art squeezed by candlelight giving blips to pearls in nan nunk, chuated the petalled gardenings, drew us teeny tinies to treble a working in shyness. If there is but one grinning to suit, and you are going to lift your hat, where is your left foot, where is your right? Your right, one once lifted left, which one, I ask myself, is it meaning or direction? Exotic sphere, if I advance, the fig comes fickle in its moves. But not enough nanas for this dance. <laughs> Packing their portmanteaus with knottles of gentuition, words are taking a holiday. Going anywhere nice? I swallowed half a rabbit, pulled three quarters downed by the sea, moving, reversed, all fingers to a pretty villa, where Zeno made up her party playing chess with her and me. Calling cards or cross tempers, my will, would you weep for the hair unlived beneath the tree? For his life, not his suit, was meant to be so beautiful, and the arrow should have never, not have never got him, for he said as much. O oh, wordy world and worldy word, a feast of fartleberries, huffling, bagpiping, a dimple finger in one ear, a cacophonous chorus of get your hair cut, we've already had your greens. <laughs> Fruit cake, I may be, but you definitively are well bred. Could you rise to the occasion? Did everybody loathe you? Away to the left, I is the only belong she barked after half-baked as I is, very like a foral in waiting, a steamed pudding, stroked entirely of catskin, nothing but a walk, pencilled in, upside down, upon a tiny mushroom. Beautiful, who are something fluid, waited upon curiously, 
What he thinks, you please, of carpet dinners, of shoes and strings, of ceiling, wax and kings. No strings attached, he waxes, and shoes me out the room. So fast the ceiling spins and I laugh at the carpet. I don't call that nickel. A so-and-so, and so I acquired a dress, a manifold with many folds, non-native to our ecosystem. If you hold it to your shell-like, what do you hear? My cockles are warming, my kaleidoscope smile all in the briny pleats. The winkling umber, no doctor acclaims him, is located a cutting his teeth on my best breadly butter and maidenly jams. To bonnet, to hunting, a hunting, a hunting. To bonnet, to all frumious, we will, to happyish go. I must recount my places before you faint. Away at what rising do you breakfast during the egg seasoning? <laughs> 32 Tuesdays exactly before swallowing. Overly excited, if anything, when rolling my toasty soldiers into tasty morsels. <laughs> Take this, please, with a pinch of salt. I had hoped to find a seat still warm. Or was that a jam tomorrow rule? The haddock eyes me, and as he eyes me, sings. And the song is tender peaches, and it is called a design for a corset with an expansible bust. And its name is the Muffin Mistress, and it does nothing but extended thoughts and other comfits secreted in its monosyllable. Ah, me, I have a lapidary, a reticule for fallen rabbits. In what quaint container do you conceive a great your odds of eggs? My odds are mustard, vaulted in a tussy mussy. With a bell I left my party in shoals of peachy peepers. Did she paint yellow her locks by the tutorious breeze? The lostness of a white glove calling upon the trunk of a clock half born. My ends they flutter by laced napkins, fluted fruit dishes, strung between promenading, nights rolling slipperous and whistling mouse filled. I dip my pickle in a tea stain jar. <laughs>